What's up, Two Shoes fans? Welcome back. How you guys doing? Uh, if this is your first time tuning in, thanks for joining us. Uh, before I get into this week's episode, I just want to talk about some few fun things we got coming up for you guys. Oh, yes. I'm going to have some t-shirts made. I'm going to have some t two, shoe two Shoes t-shirts made. And uh, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. Now, to be qualified for this giveaway... Uh, you're gonna have to be subscribed to the channel. That's one gonna be one of the rules um, but Aside from t-shirts uh, I'm probably gonna be giving away eventually in the not too distant future. I'm thinking I might be giving away a PlayStation 5 too um, But uh, with all that being said um, if you want to be uh, If you want to be qualified, I guess you could say to uh, receive any of this fun swag or be a part of any of these contests you will have to be subscribed to the channel amongst a couple other steps. So anybody that already is subscribed to the channel, good for you. You're going to be in the running. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel and you're watching this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just give you a second. I'll just take a sip of my whiskey here. While you guys are uh, subscribing to the channel. It doesn't take that long. I mean, you just click the button, but just in case you're like, oh, what did it subscribe? You get to minimize the thing, blah, 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 blah. So, anyway, that's that. Let's get into this week's episode. Uh, this week, my guest is a friend, a comedian, as most of them are, a Boston comedian, uh, Severin Remo. Uh, Severin is a very intelligent person. Let me just say that. Uh, which is always a little intimidating for me, having talks with people that are way smarter than me uh, and basically sounding like a buffoon working my way through the conversation. But uh, on top of that, he is a uh, extremely funny person. Uh, he's got a very dry, uh, sometimes dark, but mainly dry sense of humor, as you'll see in this episode. Um, also active military. Uh, he's in the Air Force. Uh, we talk about Top Gun a little bit, and he sets me straight about the dumb shit that I believed about the new Top Gun movie. Uh, he learns about Fisher Cats for the first time, I think, uh, amongst many other. Th oh yeah, we talk about uh, trash and and uh, and my different ways of forms of trash disposal, my my methods uh, per se, and uh, amongst many other uh, silly things. Uh, it was a very fun episode, as they always are. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Now that I have that deck there, I'm going to get the barrels. <laughs> so I can... Yeah, dad life, dude. dude I'm, gonna, it's funny. I'm going to listen to yourself. I'm, I'm going to get, get trash barrels now. Dude. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do? I don't live in the city. I don't have a fucking trash guy. Dude, like, I don't know. Maybe, have, maybe in a couple of years I can afford a dumpster. I don't know. And that's yeah. how we start the podcast. Let's go. But you started off this episode by going, I'm not old. He's repping dead. for the zombie apocalypse and our prioritizing PlayStation Call of Duty. first. Play PlayStation. This is where we're gonna die first. <laughs> Did I just get the golden fucking touch? And then I have to explain to you website. You That's what the Texas butthole tickler used to say when he ran away. <laughs> <laughs> Crunch bowl. All right, good pull. Oh, what the fuck did you do? Everybody sucks. Dicks, 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 dicks. And Rich is fucking full blown making out with this lady. Quality content. Hey. <laughs> We styling. I got my ginger ale. I got my whiskey. That uh, we got enough ice. You got our uh, respective it, cups all, of alcohol. It, yeah, it'll all be melted by the time we're done. But I don't give a shit. That's so, the point um, of ice. Nice. We're running it back. Do you remember when I said put a pin in that? Oh, yeah. We're gonna talk about that. You're from Colorado. We'll get into that later. Uh, Cause the first thing I wanted to talk or mention are we rolling right now oh yeah oh yeah oh, wow. it's going there's no there's no uh 
There's no hey, ladies and gentlemen. I thought you said we'd get one of the the clapboard. Oh, I'm, I clapped. <laughs> you, I clapped when I walk, was walking right. over here. But I am going to eventually get the clapboard. Right. And then we'll be sitting here. That's... Andy will do the thing. Because then after like... Because uh... that's what I'm used to. I'm like a famous actor. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, I don't know where my <laughs> yeah. cue to start yeah. is. And you have to say cut at the end. Sam right. Buck did that too. Yeah. Because for some reason he needs to like turn on a certain little... Like he kind of just... You know, he turns mm. it to f- from nine to ten, right? When, exactly. when he starts podcasting, but he goes, he goes, wait, I like to wait. Are we rolling? Okay, I like to. <laughs> like, I'm like, well, dude, what? Okay, it doesn't matter because there's no. That's supposed to be the point. It's not supposed to be like um, an introduction, like "Hi, hey, ladies and gentlemen," because I want to yeah. do the um, like all that shit beforehand, right? Um, there's. I'm mod- I'm trying to model this after my favorite podcasts and trying to be a blend of a few a few of them and um, I do like uh, Andrew Santino's introductions. I also my ending kind of st- steals his idea a little bit. It's a little bit of a, a rip off of his, but he just uh, basically introduces the guest before right. in like a pre-recorded thing, and then you've got your uh, intro. Video. I think Joe Joe Rogan's does that too. You know, he does the my guest today this this this, and then it goes into the yeah yeah because he's just got the intro, and then he's like, okay, we're live, good. Yeah. Like he, there's yeah. still like that prompt to like we're live right. type of thing, which that's the cool thing about that OBS program is once I get that intro done, we can put it into that program, and Andy, when he hits start recording, the program will be told like play this template first and then fade into whatever. So it'll automatically play the intro and then like fade into the other program, which is cool. It just makes everything a little bit easier. Right. It's almost like that's preset, whatever, whatever. So that's good. We're actually starting to get to a point where the production value, I've, I've kind of had all this stuff in place. I just have never really taken the patience or time to, Taking the patience. Never had the patience or taking the time to uh, sit down and learn it because I'm surprised. I'm trying to start a business. Right. But that's fucking it's tough. I'm trying to stay busy and blah, blah, blah. But enough about me. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention, which uh, it shouldn't be that impressive, but I took note of it. Because I was like, I wonder if he's going to be be like, hey, where do you live again? Mm-hmm. But you're just like, found your way here. Somehow. Looked up the old message. Well, that's that's the thing. I was like, there's a couple different ways that that could have happened. I was like, he could just be a very savvy individual and scrolled back four messages yeah. and found the address. But Hired a really, tracker. Yeah, <laughs> no, but it... it I don't think impress is the word, but it definitely amazes me. How well, some... maybe like other like it's not impressive that I did it, but it's like wow when other people. It's don't equally do... as unimpressive. <laughs> yeah, you're like holy shit. When other people are like, "Hey, man, so how, how do I?" And you're like, "I think I can still see the fucking text yeah. thread. Like, I literally can still see the bottom of the last message that told you where I live, but." I don't know, dude. Uh, yeah, it's it's this place again. Yep. Notoriously, I don't think comics are all that self sufficient. No. Um, I. Tr- <laughs> this person knows. They're who not he is. always the most well adjusted humans. This person knows who they are, but I tried to give someone directions. That the road was blocked. The, mm-hmm. the cops had the road blocked that way. And so there's there's an exit. We're halfway between. Exit 8 and exit 7. Mm-hmm. So you've got three main arteries on Cape Cod. There's 6A, there's Route 6, and there's 28. North, Central, South. They all go East and West. You cannot get lost on Cape Cod. It's, it's literally East and West. That's it. If you find one of these back roads, just keep taking turns until you end up back out on one of those East-West roads. But this way was blocked as GPS... Wasn't rerouting them. Obviously, it didn't follow the detour signs because there's like little back road. But Bob, long story short, 
I was like, there's go this way. There's a blinking light. If if you stand at my driveway, you can see the blinking light. I go take a right. That'll take me to, to take you to the highway. Get on the exit that says Boston, right? Yeah. I was like, wait, what? So so if wait, you, tell if me you again. see a man Dude. in a yellow raincoat, you've Dude. gone too far. Dude. I was like, wait, sorry, I had to repeat the direct. I go. Dude, I almost wanted to be like, get, and he was like, he was getting upset. He was getting upset at my level of frustration because I was, he's like, just, just, dude, just tell, just show me. Like, he wanted me on his phone. I was like, it's, it's, I swear to God, your phone, cool. You got an Android. I don't even know how to work your phone. I got an Apple, but because he had the map kind of out and he wanted me to point. I was like, but that's, a shittier reference point than you literally being able to. And I was like, Hey man, I go, can, I don't know if I got it. Maybe get out of the car. But I was like, you can see. And I, I think I backed his car up. I see the light. He's like, all right, all right. Take a right at that. And there you go. <laughs> You're on your way. You're on your fucking way. My man. Interesting. Indeed. All right. You're from Colorado. So how long have you lived in Boston then? Because I didn't know you were from Colorado, I guess. I moved out here last August. So, yeah. Oh, I did know that you lived in Germany, actually. Yeah. Uh, when you Was that your first place you were stationed? Yeah, three years in Germany. So where were you after that? Here. Here? Yeah, so graduated Germany for three years, now here for a year. Yeah. So from Germany in August is when... All right, but you're from Colorado. Yeah. What was the name of the place, Colorado? You because you Loveland, said it. Yeah, could you see the face you made? I was like, you. It was like you made it seem very unimpressive. Well, it's just when like you, it's not like a place that people have heard. Loveland of. sounds like a place in Texas. Is that a place in Texas? Lubbock, like a, Lubbock, Te- Texas. Yeah, Loveland. I don't know why. Like, nah, maybe it's, it's in a... There's a ski area uh, that's not really co-located with the town. Um, it's close to Col- like uh, Fort Collins, which is where Colorado State is. Like All one right. of the main colleges. But I kind of moved That's the purple team? Is Colorado State the mm, Buffaloes? The... No. And the Buffs aren't purple, man. <laughs> All right. Col- so I, shows how much uh, yeah, fucking college East Coaster, football dude. knowledge I got, dude. I you East Coasters hate don't... You're you played football in college. You're probably so disgusted at my level of knowledge right now. But to each their own. Yeah, I, I've never I never liked college football. I never I never understood the fascination with it. I, it always and I think it was because as a kid, it just like fucking ruined my Saturday cartoons. It was like, oh, you get you thought you were watching cartoons all day, bitch. No, you get fucking football. Here, Your guy's slightly older than you. Here are some indentured servants yeah. on the gridiron. <laughs> Just, but yeah, they fucked up my Saturday cartoons, I think. And I, and I resented college football as a kid for that. And I just never liked it. Cause I never really liked, uh, never really that big of a fan of pro football until I got into fantasy sports. Pretty standard. Cause I was, um, growing up. I like playing all the sports. I did play all the sports. Um, but my favorite sports were hockey and baseball. And even then, I was never like a historian the way some guys were, where they'd be able to like name all the old greats. And but I was just like, and even the current players, I was just like, I just know how to play the game. And I like watching. It's cool. But I don't, didn't resonate that way. But uh, football... Fantasy, that's what it was. We started doing fantasy baseball, then fantasy football, and then it was a wrap. Like fantasy, because fantasy football is like week in, week out. But it's just one week. Right. Where baseball is like every fucking... Like an eternity. Dude, every fucking... Which was cool at first. Because you're like, yeah, I'm like a manager dude it's like i'm almost like managing my own baseball team dude i gotta make sure i got a shortstop and every you know i gotta be productive every day and but then it was like dude i gotta fucking i gotta check my team today i do it if i don't check my team i'm gonna fucking lose like that's if you don't you're missing out on weight guys are getting injured every day you get the waivers it's 
fucking crazy, dude. It's a whole nother world. You you might as well be playing World of Warcraft with your your buddy. Like you just, it's big time suck. It's a huge time suck, dude. So unless you're not a huge benefit, yeah. Unless you could argue, unless you're fucking lucky, uh, like a, a savant, or you have way too much time to put into this shit, you're just not going to be successful in your fantasy leagues. That's all there is to it. And how are you supposed to like be happy unless you're successful in your fantasy leagues? It's... You get those. Du- it's like um, those, <laughs> it's dude. Depressing. It's like getting likes on Facebook. You just get the s- little tiny doses of those endorphins. Yeah. Or what's it called? Dopamine. Not endorphin. Dopamine. You get the tiny little doses. Like you may lose that week, but during. The week when you lose, there's ups and downs. Like, you were up by 15 points at one point. You got to watch Odell Beckham catch a 70-yard touchdown. It was like, fuck yeah. Like, dude, I'm going to, you know. And then the yeah. dude came back on Monday night, and you got your dick kicked in. And it's like, it can be, you get those highs. It's very roller coaster. You get the highs and the lows. But it's, I guess it's, it's like that, I don't know, maybe addictive personality very much resonates or, or um gravitates towards that right because you're like ah, you're right always on the edge of your seat like a like a like you're like a gambling addict because you're like ah, i just see fucking just 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 dude you're yelling at the defensive line for getting a penalty because yeah. or, or like you're fucking you're pissed off at matthew stafford because he's dropping back and his back shoulders always to your guy and you're like he's fucking oh, dude he's literally open every fucking time you drop back would you just make him your first read once like what the fuck dude you're freaking out over the lions game which you know it's cool yeah one, well, it makes you one, more invested but that's yeah. that's the word that's the word i never knew who the i never gave a fuck about the kansas city chiefs versus the Chicago Bears and now I'm like yeah but I got Tyree Kill going right you know and the Bears defense which is kind of counters each other but you know it's one of those fun things where now you have a reason and especially as you get older when you where you're like what am I going to do on Sunday you get excited for your days <laughs> off you know you're like I am not so I don't I can't remember what comedian does it but they have the joke where you're like when you're a kid they would ask you, what did you do today? And you'd be like, oh, I didn't do anything. Or you ask yeah. that same question to an adult. They're like, dude, I didn't do anything. Right. And it was fucking fantastic. Do, so, do miss those kind of days. Yeah. I've, I've been enjoying those Sundays lately. Right. You don't set, I don't set my alarm the night before, like whatever you end up to sleep early. But for some reason I wake up early on that Sunday. That's and, always kind of nice. Yeah. Cause then that means you're taking a 10 30, 11 o'clock nap. That's what that, that's what that means for me anyway. Cause I'm up and I'm smoking weed. I'm doing my thing. And then, you know, go to the dump, get breakfast, Get my chores done, go to the dump, come back, sit down. You go to the dump every Sunday? Not every I try to go every Sunday, but every other What do you got to do at the dump every Sunday? Nothing, just get rid of my trash. Okay. You know? It it, it accumulates in that little uh flat bed. Uh, yeah, yeah, 8 gallon fucking kitchen trash thing I got up there. It's usually like one, it's one bag of trash, but like one bag of trash in my room. Like I don't have I'm going to get the um now that I have that deck there, I'm going to get the barrels. So I can... Yeah, dad life, dude. I'm, gonna, it's funny. I'm going to listen to yourself. I'm, I'm going lis- to get trash barrels now. Dude. Yeah, bro. <laughs> what do you want to do? I don't live in the city. I don't have a fucking trash guy. Dude, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe have, in a couple of years I can afford a dumpster. I don't know. I... <laughs> I uh, yeah, I'm like single. I'm a bachelor. I got no kids, but I definitely uh Dude, maybe uh, someday you can have your own landfill. I don't know. Dude, dream big. Dude. The fucking trash but wolf, well, there was a month or there was like a, a couple weeks where I just didn't give a fuck and I was just throwing them cuz I have like a it's not a closet. It's almost like a storage cuz it's the attic. So there's like this extra storage room that's unfinished or whatever. And I was just like wasn't even thinking about it. I just 
tie it up, put a new bag in, and I just threw the thing in the in that door behind the door because I was like, yeah, I'll just go to the dump later. And it was like two weeks later, and my fucking aunt went up to grab something, and she was like so appalled that I think she <laughs> yeah, took. This and is I was the like, trash room. Yeah, and I was <laughs> so I was like, well, I was gonna fucking yeah, I was pretty much gonna take it out the next day, and I get. It's almost like I get offended when you take my trash out. Where it's like, yeah, I was going to fucking take the trash. Don't treat me like a child. I was going to take the trash out. But at the same time, they're like, she's like, you fucking, you just letting trash pile up in the back room. It was really only like two weeks. But it was one of those like, you know, just going deep down the depression hole. Just eating fucking pizza by Evan every other day, dude. Those pizza boxes pile up. That they do. Those extra Two slices that you don't eat, and the co- <laughs> that shit that shit piles up in the trash. The, the Before you know pizza. it, your trash room's full. And it, yeah, <laughs> so like the idea of uh, a couple of fucking bigger trash cans outside that you can let that shit collect in is actually a logical and b a little appealing. Yeah, yeah, I'm turned on. Yeah, yeah. well, I love how you just completely like just kind of like uh, a mas- or not emasculated me, but like you definitely. You, you made me feel a little daddish and silly I'm in front of our podcast your audience. Balls, man. It was like now I got to defend myself <laughs> about my 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 trash, uh, how I like you know um, consolidate my uh, my garbage. It's like I feel like I'm being responsible, and you're making me feel like a, a trash nerd or something. About <laughs> trash nerd. <laughs> making, there is no such you, thing you, as you, a trash. Yeah, nerd. I'm a fucking trash nerd because I like to. to, to uh, well, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. I, yeah. I'm excited about the idea of building like a, because I saw my buddies, you know, you see all different sorts of trash uh, consolidation methods. <laughs> Dude, countless. Yeah, countless. <laughs> Some people just have the, uh, Some, the, yeah. the two big blue things that they like get because, well, they get. Yeah. They get How the, lame is that? The, well, yeah. <laughs> oh, I pay. Dude. I pay monthly for my trash to get exactly. fucking. Get a dump sticker, pussy. Yeah. Take that shit out yourself. But now one of those, like, uh, you just build it yourself. It's just some, like, wooden lathing or whatever. And it's just, like, a wooden box. It's got the top with the latch. You open it up. It's got two trash containers in there that, that, can, that can carry maybe two trash bags apiece. You don't want to, yeah, like... people drive by and they're like, wow, that is an artisanal trash receptacle yeah. you don't want to let your trash pile up more than two bags a piece like no more than two recyclables no more than two kitchen trash bags because that means like you're just that's lazy dude that's that's when your trash room starts to get full right you know like when the three and four trash bags get in there it can get a little a little aggressive you can get a rat problem yeah what does your trash room look like do you have a, tra- do you have a trash i don't room have or- a trash room do i don't i don't have the means for a trash room. do you get uh it would just be a living room with you trash have roommates and shit so do you guys yeah. get the you have like the trash service do you get we no- do we're I, nos at disposal yeah. you bougie yeah, fucking I don't, bitch i don't, I don't <laughs> mean to sound <laughs> i don't want to sound uppity but, exactly but, yeah. i'm a little bit bougie in that i put my trash in a can and I wheel it out once a week. <laughs> yeah. Well, not of all not all of us have dough like that, right, Andy? What's your trash room looking like? I have possums going to my trash outside. <laughs> Andy the Andy has a it is a trash uh, area. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? I don't have a dumb sticker, I just pay by the week or yeah. by the month. You pay per trip? Twenty dollars a trip. I had a question though, change the subject. All right. Being stationed in Germany for three years, did you learn how to speak German? Nine. (laughs) Nine. He goes nine. Nice. No, I didn't. I worked with like uh, uh, mostly Americans, and I I was trying to learn for probably like the first six months while I was out there, and then I just didn't want to bother. German's kind of hard, right? Yeah, it's that, and um, it's a gross I, when language. I was, when no I, offense, any Germans, but your language is kind of fucking yeah. Heavy just, offense to any Germans. Your language is horrible. This is gross. It's no. gross. It's just not. It's just hard hitting. You know, yeah, it's those yeah. hard. Yeah, it's not like you know. We fear what we don't understand. Yeah, yeah. well, it's not like the French, or you know, you don't have not a not super eloquent. Or, or I also like when I was Spanish people. I was traveling a lot. So when I was home, I was just hanging out in my house, like, like 
going on walks and stuff, I wasn't really interacting with the local populace. So like when you I'm say not trying to learn German world? to go like go like bar hopping in like Spain or something like that. It doesn't didn't do me much good there. So yeah. I'm like like I would take a lot of trips, but other than that I'm fairly introverted, so like European trips? Yeah. I'm assuming. I'd just take like I, weekend trips because it's fairly cheap to travel out there, you know. I remember, I remember one Ryanair time. Ryanair is ridiculous. You know, it's like 30 euro and you're like, yeah, it's two hour flight. It's nothing like it is here. You can get around flights. pretty easy. I remember someone yeah. was like, Europe's basically the size of New England. So I was like, you get a, you can get anywhere in like a couple hours. And then I was like, looked at a map. I was like, Europe's a slightly bigger <laughs> than New England. Dude. Yeah, I don't know. You know, about like, that. I'm sure you can get around it quicker than most country to country ventures yeah in, in the world but it's definitely it bigger. Three, yeah it took me a, it was a four hour flight I'm, there's no four hour flight in new england yeah no no it's like 50 it's, it's fucking 50 minutes to new york i think right which is basically like you take the end of new england dude 50 minutes th- 30 of it is your boarding uh, yeah. no you're uh, a takeoff, takeoff and, and it's landing. like 20 is takeoff 20 is descent like you're yeah. essentially like in the air for 20 minutes it's an hour flight like 20 takeoff 20 flight 20 descent it's so fast yeah new york flight is wild florida's pretty quick i did vegas which wasn't that bad five hours is i don't know Oof. if you have the right if you have the right equipment or i just i usually i'm pretty what good do you mean the right equipment like a flashlight well i mean I've never thought about that, but damn, you know, <laughs> yeah. like you catch the right movie on yeah, the, exactly. the flight, the in-flight movie. But no, like iPad where you can watch movies, and I, which I tried doing, but then the whole Wi-Fi thing, it's just, you know, I'm not that savvy or give a fuck inside of that one flight where if I was traveling more regularly, I think that's something you definitely would want to get a little more savvy with. But I don't give a shit. I just fucking fall asleep. Yeah. I'm pretty good at falling asleep. I rack out on the plane, usually. I'm pretty good at, like, knock on wood, that I generally don't have problems falling asleep. I supplement. Alcohol? No, I smoke. I've smoked weed my whole life. So by the end of the day, it's like, dude, good luck trying to stay up past 9 o'clock. When I was trying to do the sober October, I definitely, falling asleep was a little more challenging. You Not struggle something. to stay up past nine o'clock. You're up fairly early. Yeah, oh yeah. Because and then I'm I'm working construction all day long, so I'm doing like yeah, manual, manual labor right. and smoking weed throughout the day. It, it all a bit of it, a dual it, hat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it definitely, uh, those two kind of uh, work in in unison to uh, to put me to bed. I just know I can stay up past nine o'clock, but especially when uh, like work's been a little slow. But if I'm in like a steady 40 hour work week where we're working hard every fucking day, like, yeah, even if I wasn't really smoking weed, you just get done with work. You eat dinner and you sit down and just naturally like my eyes just like I'd be in my chair and you all of a sudden you're doing this shit. Right. Or. The best, or not the best, it's just, I always think it's cool. It's like time travel, dude. You're sitting there awake, and then you wake up. And you're like, wait the fuck, what? Right. <laughs> like, I was, I last, last I remember was being awake, and now it's fucking an, 20 minutes, hour later, who knows what. Right. And then you recall, and you vaguely remember half hearing the TV inside of that quick little nap you took. But It's like if you chug a bottle of liquid Xanax, you time travel forward a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Xanax comas. Pfft. Did you say Xanax? Yeah. Okay. For a brief second, I was thinking of uh, you said chug, and uh, for some reason, well, I they was make it in a liquid. Like, yeah. Oh, do they? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think it's a recent development. I've never done it, but I've never had Xanax. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Liquid, Liquid for, yeah. Jesus, it took him long enough. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now I can mix it with my booze. So you were stationed in Germany for three years. You said you chose Germany 
mm-hmm. because it the, the, you it would allow you to travel. Oh, because the yeah. uh, the the air right? You said the airport. It yeah. was like the central hub for. Yeah, I mean Germany's pretty centrally located in Europe, and then yeah, the other two options are like uh, like Cambridge area in the UK, um, Great Britain, and then like Northern Italy. So Germany is a little more central, and there's a little more you can do, like with that airport and like just getting in your car and going. Like I could drive up to Amsterdam, or I could drive down to like Swiss. Or uh, French, or yeah, like Italian far- Alps to go skiing or something. Did you do that? Yeah. Are, are you do you ski? Yeah, not not oh, super well. What a stupid fucking question. Really? Yeah, like I, I went. My parents would take me growing up, but then I got really into sports. Is that so. like be? Is that almost like being from uh, California and not being good at surfing? Like, what, yeah, like amongst I, your I, friends, are you like almost like a? No, I'm. Yeah, I'm. Is that pari- I'm the worst. pariah the word where you're just yeah. like that fucking? You're just like the outcast. Like, yeah. What is Sev- Sevy's deal? Like, yeah, how, I don't get how he can't. Skate. And and I mean during the time when the, a lot of people were going a lot was like high school college and I was like, you know, I was the heaviest I've ever been and like, it had been like just hard to go out and were do you that a and big then, like, boy growing up and then uh like i was always tall but i was never like super heavy until i was like intentionally like trying to gain weight was it for football yeah oh oh because you were a lineman yeah that's right so the military did the military was it like did the military start transforming you and your fitness or whatever was there like like what really. point i were tried to like... lose weight before basic uh in an effort to make basic a little less painful yeah uh which turned out to kind of be a mistake because i should have just kept as much weight on as i could because i really struggled to gain weight at at school because the you know the food was kind of bad and you're like underslept and overworked and whatnot so because it's the well, I just like I would like you because know, it's the army. Like, or it's it was Air Force, so I went to oh, the sorry, Air Force Academy. Army. I said no army. worries, Fucking but Air like Air Force, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like wake up and you have like like a like a personal appearance inspection, just stupid bullshit. Um, and then you like go to class all like until lunch, and then after lunch. You got like 45 minutes and then you have to head down to football practice and you do that until like dinner at like seven and then you hit dinner and then you go to your room and you pretty much like are probably doing like some level of homework until you go to sleep at like 10, 1030. So Sounds it's like exciting. Yeah, exactly. But it's also like, an like, academy though. It's yeah. not like a traditional college. Either. No. Like this, it's Naval Academy, the Air Force Academy. Yeah. West so it, they're yeah. like bases in a, in a sense they're probably less like a college and more like a base yeah it's it's a so weird we're like, it's you're, like this you're weird... not living this cushy college lifestyle or partying no. in dorms it's a dry anything. campus yeah oh man so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> it, it's this weird mix because like you don't get the it's like a mix between a military base and a college but without any of the benefits of either you know so as a result of that, did you go like hard the other way once you got out of school and, and were stationed in Europe and traveling around? Were a little you, like, bit, yeah. Going ham, a little like, bit. Like, so so how far of a drive was Amsterdam? Five and a half, I think. Oh, that's not that bad. I mean, that's like driving to uh, J Peak from here. Yeah. Essentially, that's it's like driving to March. You yeah. could catch an easy flight too. Like it would have been like yeah. But, and or well, what was bus. that like? So, I mean, you can't, but you can't like smoke or anything. No. Is that almost like a tease? I mean, to go to Amsterdam a little while bit. you're active military? A little bit. You're yeah. like, I can drink, but there's all this yeah. other stuff that's <laughs> legal. That there's I'm, whores there's, everywhere. Well, yeah, I, mean, I wasn't necessarily referring well, to just the whores. Yeah. It's just all sorts it of things. It feels so bad being in the military when I could be doing drugs off whores. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can still get a whore when you're in the military. I mean, that's I essentially like that's like essentially, essentially the middle of every single m- military movie that's ever existed. That's like the first 15 minutes. Right. Um, I think the most famous one is uh, Biloxi. What's it called? Biloxi Blues? Yeah. That was a very good one. Good 
good uh good horse scene in that one dude. <laughs> good, good yeah horse. oh she treats him right right yeah. doesn't she give him a freebie too i think the best one would be full metal jacket yeah he's so horny well yeah, yeah. but they would you don't actually get the uh you just the, get the, the inner like the the two the buku. sale the two the buku. buku yeah no black guys. Too buku. No boom boom soul brother. <laughs> yeah. Too buku. Hey, yeah. you, you don't have to set that alarm. We can uh, see it just in the just. Well, I could also tell you that after we are, we could have that discussion. <laughs> not on, not on in the middle of the thing. But hey, what, hey, cool, whatever. We're we're learning. We're, My phone's on silent too. I learned that from last night that the alarm isn't silent. Is not no matter what. Your ringtone set off. Yeah. Yeah. So. That wouldn't make it a very good alarm. I That's think true. if it did that on silent, which. I'm kind of trying to think now. Does my alarm? Your alarm just goes. You're like, oh shit! I didn't. I didn't wake up. My phone was just vibrating. All right, Amsterdam. We were talking about Amsterdam, and then we were talking about hoes, Biloxi <laughs> blues, and uh, oh, we touched on Colorado. We touched a uh, thirty minutes. We're not doing the keys segment because I already know what all his fucking keys are for because we already did that before we could do i mean technically technically this is the second episode with sevi but the other episode my mic was dog shit and now uh, we actually have a, pro- a a proper setup here i almost said professional but we're not calling fucking man yeah. we're, uh, it's better it's yeah give it better. some time give it some time it's gonna be great he's upgrading the setup like he is his trash cans so yeah. In due time, baby. In due time, I have the vision. It's exactly. there. Like, and it's just a matter of like putting it into practice. If you see the trash can, you can be the trash can. That's right. If you build it, they will come. And that is raccoons, but they won't get in because they'll fucking have a well built trash that's receptacle. Because that's a real problem is the raccoons. You know? You can't store your trash outside. Or Fisher cats around here specifically, Fisher cats. What the hell's a Fisher cat? Yeah, so that's a new thing. Yeah, I've heard of them. They're fucking bad at. They're like they look almost like a bobcat or so. All right, here we go. This is so. This is perfect. Uh, Google scenario. Andy's gonna pull this up, and uh, in the future. So for anybody watching this at home, um, if I try to uh, use the oh, that's like a raccoon. Oh, but they're fucking, they're mean as fuck. They do look rather unfriendly. They kind of look like a wolverine a little bit. Like yeah. a, they're like a badger. Are they in the badger fam? Like, they will kill your cat. Or can you can you domesticate them? I doubt it. No, it's not that kind of cat, I don't think. They, they have like a crazy sound too, don't they? I've never heard one. I saw one riding my bike one day, and I never heard You saw one, one riding a bike one day? Right around here. Right by the airport on Willow Street. And this thing... I, I, I'm with you. He, the thing ran in front of me and it ran into the woods near the airport. And I was like, what the hell was that? How big was it? it like that. Yeah, I don't even I, know how big that is. Yeah, I don't know how big that is. There's no nothing behind it. As for a frame, right? You have a thing on a... On is a, that a red one? You have an image on, <laughs> yeah, you have an image on a screen like that with nothing next to it. I put it next to a banana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just... Show us with your show us with your hand, Andy. Show us where the man touched you. Point point to the doll. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, is that a man? Is that guy kneeling down? Hold it, pick, guard. Click on that picture of that guy kneeling down, holding it. Dude, that thing's fucking huge. <laughs> That's a dog. That's god. what. Is that what's up? Uh, is this just like a weird hairy tail? I guess they used to be like rampant around here before settlers showed up. And when they came here, they probably started burned, killing them. They were like, trapping. "Fuck these things, dude!" Yeah, we'll wear, <laughs> we gotta start killing them. We'll again. wear them as coats. Yeah, well, I guess they make a when they like cornered or whatever it is. Like you can hear them. I guess out in the woods, and they someone like, "Oh, that's a Fisher cat." Can you? Um, can you go to YouTube? Go to YouTube. Just type in you and it'll fucking come right up easily. <laughs> you porn. Just type damn in, it. <laughs> type in Y and it's the first thing that comes up. But um, and then go to Fisher Cat sounds. Fisher Cat noises. 
Oh, you're in images. You got to go back to go back to all. <laughs> are, you, are you familiar with the Google search? Yeah. <laughs> Not really, dude. <laughs> uh, Andy is 40 and doesn't own a computer. Respect the hell out of that. Yeah, doesn't mean he's not on fucking Facebook every day with his phone, dude. So he basically he knows how to fucking Google shit. Fisher Cat. There you go. Let's listen to one of these fucking things. Yeah, they'll be able to hear it probably. Fisher Cat screaming at night. Best audio. Give me that. Uh, give me that remote. If we turn it up, I bet the the people listening at home can hear this. Said it sounds like a child screaming in the woods. We can't hear it yet, though. I'm gonna I'm gonna agree that it's creepy, but I'm gonna have to go ahead and say it does not sound like a <laughs> child screaming in the woods. <laughs> Absolutely creepy. Yeah, it sounds like a cat if it could bark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which makes sense because the things uh, yeah. called a cat, size of a dog, looks like a badger. If my if I had a kid that sounded like that, I'd be very concerned. Yeah, <laughs> and you're like, hon, yeah, we're gonna go see the pediatrician. Yeah, this kid's got rabies. <laughs> 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 That's what your kid would sound like if yeah. your kid got bitten by a Fisher cat. Exactly. And he's yelling for help. He's like, help, help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Fisher Cats. So they look kind of like a, a Wolverine slash Badger, but they're just brown. They look very unassuming, but they're, they're fucking dangerous, I guess. Fisher Cats, fucking little cunts. It's good. The, the, the entire skeleton of this conversation has been trash. <laughs> Everything comes from the trash. Oh, that's right, because we started talking about... Uh, Fisher cats from trash. Because we started talking about raccoons. Yep. Keeping out of your trash. And then Andy said, no, no, no. you got to watch <laughs> out for the Fisher cats. We were talking about other things. We are talking about Amsterdam. Did, that didn't come from trash. I know. We, we have talked a lot about garbage on this <laughs> podcast, yeah. which is fitting. Right. Because I feel like some of us are garbage human beings. Myself, yeah. more specifically, I'm referring to. <laughs> yeah. Andy's shaking his head. He goes, speak for yourself, guy. I'm not. I'm talking about myself. But there are going to be a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of sarcasm when you get comedians in a room together. Right. And uh, so there will be a lot of things said that will give some people watching this, the impression that we're garbage human beings. Right. But we're not. Look, we mean well. We're just... If you can't want... detect the sarcasm, yeah. that's not my fault. I... Yeah. We just want to make people laugh. We don't. Right. We're not always good at it. But like, it's about intent, people. You know? Mm. Grow the fuck up. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do. Like People I don't typically get offended. I don't trash. know if you know. Yeah, I don't know if you know my comedy, but I insult my audience. That's how I try to get laughs. I just fucking call them pieces of shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Top Gun. I want to. I want to touch on that again. Andy, you're gonna have to pull this up now that we have the Google images. Go to uh, go to uh, the YouTube too. We're gonna YouTube this, the new Top Gun movie, because mm -hmm. now I'm gonna get your expert opinion. I we already talked we already talked about it, so I kind of know now the truth behind it. Which I thought that in the new Top Gun, Tom Cruise actually flew these planes. Uh, I mean, but but I think what they did is kind of twisted words, and Tom Cruise actually flew. In, in these planes, right? Would you rather see the trailer or just go? Yeah, go. So go to Top Gun movie trailer, the new one, and then because I want to, and then we'll. It, what you can do too is blow it up, right? So enlarge it. So you see the green. Make go to full screen. Yeah, yeah. Cool. We're gonna get fucking flagged. I bet for this sound. 
So we're going to mute it. So so I've been told so, all, yeah. all the flying in this, the, uh, there's nothing in this that's CGI. It's all real flying. So that there's one point, I'll Vandy posit, where it looks like they're fucking taking off. Well, they are. They take off off a fucking carrier. Right. And Tom Cruise is in the front seat. And I, I, I'm going to pause it because maybe there is a guy in the fucking. Um, I bet you wouldn't be able to tell, though, if there was a guy in the back. I just I it's hard for me to fathom. I guess he did learn how to fly a helicopter for a movie, didn't he? Or something? Yeah, he, dude, he probably really was flying. I don't think he was flying it as crazily with the maneuvers that they were pulling. But dude, yeah, he dude, he does all his own stuff. He's he's kind of a G, dude. He is crazy. It's and, just and, hard for me to believe that they would give him a multi-million dollar aircraft. Well, here, okay, so, all right, all right, pause it for a sec. Right there here. it is. Okay, that's it right there. Th- that looks so real. Now, I, you probably can't see the guy in the back seat because of the camera angle, right? No, you wouldn't be able to. So, yeah, if so that's you, a trainer. So what you're saying is... like yeah. a, a regular, like, fighter jet. Okay, so you're saying he can be in the, look like he's in the driver's seat. A guy in behind them's flying that. Dude, yeah, I mean, even realistically, this could be a shot of the back seat. Okay. You know, I I don't know for sure what's going on, but my conjecture would be that he's you, not fucking taking off of a carrier, right? Which, dude, I get. Look, I'm I I'm so. Uh, it's almost like a selectively naive. Like I choose to be naive because I want to believe that if I ever like won the lottery. You could have Tom Cruise fly, fly you in a jet. No, I could pay. I could pay to learn how to fly. Okay, because so he, I guess here's where my logic base is, right? So they do retire these airplanes. There are retired F sixteens out there, right? Usually, when an airplane gets retired, we sell them to, to a foreign partner. Okay, so there's not just like a. a there's not like. Repoed he F sixteen. It's not like a base in Nevada somewhere. No. Which is a I mean, there's a boneyard, but they're usually yeah, those they're are like usually what they call like, like can birds, so yeah. they cannibalize parts from them. So they'll take like an engine off of it and yeah. put like if an F sixteen engine breaks, they'll take that engine and just throw it away if it's like beyond wrecked. Yeah, and put this cannibalized part on the new one. Okay, that makes sense because this is my civilian knowledge version of it. It's like, I'm like, well, they retire these planes, don't they? And so conceivably like, but so, so like, okay, so they let's don't say, retire the aircraft carriers like that. No. So, okay. So yeah. they retire a plane and this production company with essentially carte blanche with a budget instead of selling this plane to Iran or the fucking, well, that's the thing though. They like, have carte could, blanche with the budget, but yeah, I guess. Could, they so could. couldn't the production companies conceivably purchase that plane Yes. And then Tom Cruise is like, I, dude, they strapped the fucking guy to the back of a fucking cargo plane and took off a runway. Right. Like that was a real shot that wasn't right. made up. Like that dude was literally hanging on to the back of an airplane while it took off on right. the exterior of the plane. Like granted, he's got like a harness, but dude, tell me you're a, I don't give a fuck how strapped in you are, dude. I get, I get that fucking weird feeling in my nuts when I get on a roller coaster. Like what if the fucking harness, like, I don't know this. I don't think I had one where the thing didn't feel like it was locked in all the way. And it was one of the ones that hangs you upside down. I was like, I don't fucking, I don't know about this. This guy's just like tied in with a rope that you're not even supposed to really be able to see to a fucking I mean, aircraft. It's not like so, it was fishing line, man. <laughs> like, no, but that's still crazy, dude. We like, tied Tom Cruise in with dental but floss. That's so, but that's how, that's how fucking people are like, yeah, well, dude, I'm mean, just like, it was fucking secure. Let's do, all right, cool. You go hang off an airplane. Like, I love, uh, that's cool, but I, but I guess the bigger point I is. I guess it wouldn't really scare me to do that stunt in particular. The one where he like jumped the building and broke his ankle. Yeah. That one's a little scary. To but me. Well, there must have been some type of netting or there was definitely yeah. a fail safe. But still, dude, he, he does. <laughs> Lost cra- another Tom Cruise today. <laughs> There's that photo of him on the fucking tower. Is that Dubai or wherever it is? He's on the top of some fucking tower. Just like, I fucking, I'm the man. I yeah. do my own stunts. Check out this photo. But um, so I guess for me, it's not that inconceivable that a production, like he essentially signs a waiver that says, look, right. I mean, they're filming a movie in space pretty they, soon. I wonder if it's more feasible that they could rent them. Cause I don't know if that you could buy them. Like 
Yeah. Oh, I mean, they're like $200 million airplanes. Yeah, like, then, but oh, what's your budget for a movie? Even if it's a billion dollars, if you need five of them, your entire budget shot. Yeah. You know? And then you got to, but then you have to take out the insurance on it in yeah. case you fucking. Yeah. So. All right. Well, f- you know, there's, so there's some to... sort of maneuvering going on. Yeah. But I don't know how they do I'm it. I'm just a dreamer, dude. Yeah. I'm just a dreamer. And I, I grew up on the original Top Gun. Do you think they bought Autobots for Transformers? <laughs> that CGI. <laughs> you you missed the whole beginning of this this the thing because no, I said just your I balls. said it was it, I'm led to I was told and I believe the you know it's they're trying to uh, convince people whether it's true or not that none of the flying in this none of the footage is fake or CGI. It's all real flying. It's all real planes. It's all real people. So. Based on cool. that information, then my, you know, the dreamer in me says, well, shit, they fucking, they were tire planes. Uh, so the studio had Tom Cruise sign a waiver. They fucking put him through a fucking 12 week flight course, like a, a fast track, fucking <laughs> whatever. A and, fast track. <laughs> and 12 week <laughs> fucking. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> And then he signed. Where's his, the brakes? He signed his life away. Like, dude, if I crash this plane, it's it's on me. And they let the motherfucker fly. But, dude, honestly, uh, the trainer thing makes sense. But even that is like, oh, well, that means he maybe got to grab the stick every once in a while. Yeah, Which, I mean, dude, that's. I mean, that's how they train pilots is with uh, an instructor pilot in the trainer seat. And then, I never you know, you, a... you have the aircraft and then you get to steer it around. So it's not like you're doing simulators and they're like, here's your F. You do a here's lot your... of sim time, but no. Like, here's your, oh. here's your, here's your super Hornet. Yeah. Fucking, exactly. uh, so if you make a mistake. Sorty number one, dude, you're on your own, dude. <laughs> yeah. You and your, your fucking. Like you, you make man. a mistake, the, the IP will take it and be like, I have the aircraft and you just like, yeah. Yeah, that's got to be so, like, even though, like, you're elite, but those first couple, even with the, the fucking instructor, must be so nerve-wracking, where you're like, I'm actually in a fucking Super Hornet right now. Um, one of my buddies is an instructor pilot, um, and, you know, the, you don't train on, like, the Super Hornet, you train on, uh, I'm going to butcher this. I think it's a T eight. So you you train on like it. it there's like echelons as you yeah. go up to fighters that have then, similar maneuverability. I'm right, sure, right? Yeah. And, and they go and slower whatever. or whatever. But yeah, like the flying in like formation, he said was one of the hardest things to get. So you're you're like, you know, you're like lining up and you're so like a wing to tip. Yeah, you're so and, and you're close. and you're going. You know. I mean, it's, 800, like, don't fucking crash into the miles an hour. Please do like, not oh. nick this other two hundred million dollar airplane with yeah. your wing. Yeah, yeah, they fly so close together. It's fucking wild. Yeah. That shit is so cool. It's it's the same thing with like the elite of anything. Where, this, I, all right, there's a great and it's gonna sound very insensitive or fucking whatever. Not That's racist, a good start. Racist, it makes but, uh, it seems like you're really concerned. I'm quoting <laughs> I'm quoting somebody else, but it's like so true though. He goes, The only people that are happy in this world are simpletons and retards. Okay. And the reason that resonates with me is like there's so many <laughs> fucking cool I like wish I was a simpleton sometimes. Dude, you're the dude getting off on trash. Because <laughs> I like I well no, because I just I, I I wouldn't care so much about shit. I would just yeah. have one narrow lane of thinking and it would just, life would just be simple. You know? No, I the ignorance be, is bliss I, mentality. It's is, so true though. Yeah. Cause you, you would, you're not self-aware. So like, you're not you, asking questions. You're not asking que- none of that shit. I'm fucking, I like being like, I have a real competitive spirit. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and like I've, Whatever I won a club championship, but I, I like I've never really like been the best. <laughs> Not to brag, no. But that's like local golf, and it, the competition wasn't even that fucking fantastic. You know what I mean? Like I, there, I was playing against good golfers, but it wasn't like a thick field. It was like a couple good guys that I maybe had to beat, and they were really good. And, and, and I don't know. I'm not trying to downplay that, but <laughs> God forbid. Right, so there's a big, there's a bigger, broader point that I'm trying to make, and it's just it's sick that like. There's people that get to fucking fly super hornets. 
Right. There's like people that are that elite that are just like, you, you know what I mean? And it's the same as like the LeBron James and the Michael Jordans of the world. Like some of us will never get to that place. But as competitive as I am or as much as I want to be great, like I just want to be great at one thing. I would be cool to be the best at one thing. Right. I don't know what that is. I don't know. Maybe I'll never get there. But I think that it it's like the opposite of the ignorance is bliss. It's like almost like it's like painful to think that shit. I'll never as many things as I want to experience in the world. I'll probably get to 40 percent of them because there's so much so much cool shit. It's like, oh, but people are like, oh, just go out and start doing it. It's like, yeah, it's yeah, cool. Easier said than done. It's not that practical. Right. To like take race car lessons, learn how to fly a plane, fucking see as many places, you know, see X number of places. And you know what I mean? Like start making that list and then see how many of those things you like the, not to sound cliche, but make your bucket list right. and then see how much of that shit you can check off before you die. Like, you know, and that especially when you start getting over older, like it can be overwhelming where you're like, time starts to fly, dude. And I'm not, not, I'm not really knocking any of these things off the fucking list. Right. You know, so you gotta have a lot of financial I, freedom to be able to yeah, do a lot of there, that stuff. There was a brief moment where I almost joined the air force because I wanted to fucking fly planes like super bad. And I didn't. And like, I, I hate to be the type of, I, you know, no regret, no regrets. The whole, that tattoo. It's like, you don't want to have any regrets, but at the same time, I'm like, shit, dude, maybe I, I still really would love to fly a f- and uh, a friend of mine who's taking flight lessons, he goes, dude, it doesn't matter F-16 or a Cessna. When you get up and you grab a hold of a stick, he goes, flying's fucking flying. I go, yeah, but I'm a fucking adrenaline junkie, like to the max. Right. So I like, I need to go fast. So as, and once I get used to flying that Cessna, I want to go to that next level. And we briefly touched on this. And I mention it every time I talk about flying fighter jets is I remember an episode of Road Rules where they were in Vegas and they took a brief class. And these they I don't know if they had an instructor in the back as well, but they were essentially doing what it was like. Well, that's the thing they definitely did for that. They had to have because like the hardest thing about flying is landing. Okay, yeah. So, so if they didn't have any camera angles, but yeah. regardless, if you're allowed to grab the stick and just yeah. play fucking essentially like laser tag version of dog fighting with red and blue like stunt planes, mm-hmm. that I don't I don't know if they were single prop or they were like tiny little like they had tiny small little jet engines or whatever, but they were like small stunt planes with like wings and like what looked like uh they had like the bulbs on the end of them. Mm-hmm. They maneuvered like real quick and they were like it was like the, one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I'm like, these are civilians that are getting like a real life dog fighting experience. I mean, uh, how fast were they going to you? I don't know I how mean, fast yeah. they were going, but definitely because like, you can't like maneuver the stick that much. Like if you th- throttle that thing hard, yeah, and you're not used to it, you're pulling multiple G's, G's. and you're gonna pass out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. So I don't know, but yeah. just but. I'm gonna you should reason. do that first. Well, as go into a G chamber. This is where, this is where my brother makes me feel so stupid. Sometimes he's like, "Why don't you just fucking Google it, dude?" Because as much as I've talked about it, I've never actually like researched that experience. Right. Because I'd like to look it up. Because I think if I could just, whatever, six hundred, a thousand bucks, if I could pay like two grand, get that experience, just done, out of my system, then I won't feel that regret of like, oh, you never fucking. You never followed your dream. You never fucking... Yeah, never got a shot. Yeah. Never fucking... A long time ago when I was a kid at Otis Air Force Base, Otis Air Force Base every year. Not the, the Blue Angels. They had the Thunderbirds. Yeah. yeah. And Blue the, Angels is Navy. Thunderbirds is Air Force. And the thing I remember most I about it was the when they flew was like, by, oh, they... I forget if, I'm getting it wrong. They flew by and then you heard the sound... Right. Yeah. Like a couple of seconds later. Because they're, yeah, they're going faster than the speed of sound. They break the sound barrier right. before they get Speaking to you. Speaking of, if, in the Air Force, did, did you notice that, I think his name is Chuck Yeager? Yep. Yeah. First guy. The to, other day, I think he broke the sound barrier. First guy yeah. to break the, the sound barrier? That was doing it. Yeah, they, they got a, uh, what's the, is it the right stuff? Is that his movie? Sam, uh, Sam, what's his name? Uh, Sam, the guy who plays... Sam Ellington? Sam Ellington, I think. Yeah. Uh, 
But not the dude with the big mustache. That's Sam Ellington. No, not Sam Ellington. The other Sam. Sam Elliott. Okay. Sam Elliott. Uh, Google Sam Elliott. Or just Google the right stuff. And uh, Andy, hit the... Uh, on, on your top bar. Hit the enlarge. The green enlarge. There you go. Uh, the right stuff. I'm pretty sure it's Sam Elliott. That was it's a, a cool good movie. movie. It, it, I think it portrays it like fairly accurately. Uh, him as a just an absolute psychopath. Yeah. Like he's just like no, like take me up in this thing and drop me. Yeah. And I will use engine propulsion as well as gravity and just <laughs> propel myself at the ground. But also the get... mindset of test pilots back then. Where they, right. Because they, they, dude, they're dropping like flies. Dude, I mean, yeah. And you like, I think it portrays his wife in that movie. Where she's just like, yeah, just like, oh, like, she's just beside herself the whole time. Go to uh, go to the IMDb page and then look up the cast. I'm pretty sure Sam Elliott's in that movie. Oh, Sam Shepard. That's his name. Yeah. Sam Shepard. Okay. Who the fuck's Sam Elliott then? He might be the mustache guy. Sam Elliott's the mustache guy. Okay. I said Ellington and Elliott. Ellington. Okay. Who? Sam Ellington's just the fucking. Yeah, that's some, no one. Yeah, that's uh, some guy we know. Yeah. From Cambridge. Um, Sam Shepard. Okay, he was in... I'm trying to think of what fucking movie he was in. Th- famous. That, oh, Black Hawk Down. He was the general in Black Hawk mm-hmm. Down. He's good. He's a good one. Um, what the fuck is the first man? Have you seen First Man? Uh-uh. Really great movie. First Man is with Ryan Gosling, and he plays, uh, uh, not Buzz Aldrin, the other one. Neil? He plays Neil Armstrong. And the very beginning of the movie... Hold up. Uh, Who remembers Buzz Aldrin before Neil Armstrong? That's almost impressive. Who's the first man on the moon? I know the second. (laughs) Gotta love that out of you. This guy. Um... I don't know who directed it, but dude, it's just a really well shot, like, like visually, like, I hate to say visually stunning. It just sounds so fucking retarded. Good cinematography. Really good cinematography. Good um, cinematography. Like Interstellar. Interstellar was great cinematography. I like, did you see Interstellar? Mm-hmm. Not in like, a long time. I liked you, it at yeah, the time. I really It's pretty it. heady. It is, but it's yeah. cool, dude. That yeah. whole like time gravity, all that shit is fucking great. Yeah. I think it's cool. Um, but, uh, first man is, uh, yeah, very, uh, very well shot, but also like, um, they, 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 they touch on like him as a test pilot early on. Like the opening scene of the movie is him up. Like he like breaks the atmosphere and then he, he's like, he's skipping off the atmosphere and has to like figure out how to get this thing back. Like that was one of the things with his career. Like, he probably should have died, like, three or four times before he even fucking made it to the moon. And then... Yeah, that he, astronaut gig, it's no joke. But also, and, and they do a really good job of, like, giving you that feel of... All that shit was analog back then. There's no digital there was, anything. When a, like, there's a red button that... that there's a red light that comes I mean, you on. You got more computing power in your phone. Yeah. By a lot. Yeah. But like you just under also you have to know like that was one thing that um that I appreciated because Apollo 13 has been on a lot lately. Um, And it's those subtle details that you don't really appreciate about that movie until you watch it a few times and, and you really actually like because you know, I saw it like I was kind of a kid when I saw it. But where like these are the smartest people essentially in the country if not the world. And like this shit goes wrong and they have to figure out how to filter out the carbon dioxide. But the fucking carbon dioxide filter in the LEM has a square peg and the carbon dioxide filter in the the whatever their main um, vehicle has a round peg. It's like we have to figure out to put this square peg in a round hole using only this and it's all the shit they have in the spaceship and then they come up with this plan and then they 
come up with a step-by-step process and then the guys in the fucking ship, but not only the guys in the ship have to follow this step-by-step, they have to know what each and every single piece of equipment, every button in the fucking thing is. Like, they have to be so well-versed. It's like high-level engineering people, yeah. man. It's like so the smart Elon Musk's. Math. Yeah, it's like- and math, too. You have to be so good at math because, like, if one guy can't fucking... If one guy passes out or something happens to him, you got to be able to fucking do that formula real quick on the... It's, like, <laughs> insane. The level of knowledge and, like, computing power in your own brain that you have to have just to, like, understand because... Whatever, anything and everything that could go wrong, you have to be able to know each and every tiny little component and not in both on that ship to be able to use it to your advantage if you have to or, or fix the problem or it's it's wild. Well, I think they like with the Martian, right? The Matt Damon movie, they said that it was like physics wise, it was like as accurate, like fairly accurate. Right. Which is crazy. Because that means the author, whoever wrote that book, had the knowledge to and, and the imagination to combine all of that for a story. That, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring that kind of full circle that I was talking about with the simpleton thing. That's another thing right there that it is so impressive to me that people have the brain power to write movies like that or Inception or like these, uh, what the fuck did I just, did, with these crazy plots and like with math and physics involved and like all this smart shit. Right. And they're writing a screenplay where the stuff like, this, like come, connects and comes back to something that you didn't expect. There's this weird blank, like bank heist plot or all this cool shit. And someone thought of that inside their brain and took... Six months, a year, three, however long, and wrote that out. Because I don't have the patience for that shit. And whatever. Everyone's like, people are like, just fucking do it. Do whatever, just sit down and do it. But it's tough. Because I come up with uh, all sorts of, I'll come up with an idea for a movie. Mm -hmm. But I can never like, I I have a lot of really good ideas for movies, I think. But that's it. They're just ideas. Or... I'll be driving, I'll hear a song, and I'll be like, yeah, that would fit perfectly in a scene where they're driving cross-country. Or, like, when the boyfriend meets the girl. You know, it's, like, weird weird how my brain works. Like, But, like, I can't... It's not that. I'm not that fucking smart. Yeah, it triggers I write a certain fucking, emotion. Yeah, but I can never write the fucking Martian. And that's where I'm, like, sometimes I'm just, like... I wish I was a simple. Yeah, team. I don't know how you sleep at night. I wish I, <laughs> I just was at, I wish I didn't get so jealous. You know, I get jealous yeah. of shit like that. Cause yeah. you know, I mean like you like to create content, yeah. you know, you're, you're an entertainer. You like to create things. Yeah. Check out my do TikTok. You, but what I'm saying, do you ever feel like you ever <laughs> like watch something and make and feel like you're not even creative at all? You're like, I know I'm creative and I can be artistic and entertaining, but like you see something that's like so, creative or or like i only really get that way with i think music because it's still elusive to me like i've learned enough about videography and like uh i don't know i've written enough but i don't know enough about screenwriting but it doesn't seem like overly mysterious to me you know it's not so something mysterious. like the, Mar- the martian yeah that's way it's out it's overwhelming my, to me right. is what it is it's not like but the thing, the thing with music is it's like mysterious and overwhelming. Like if I hear like a really incredible song, it doesn't matter from what era. I'm like, how in the hell? Yeah, that's you know, that's there's another one of those things. Where I mean, it's like, like you listen, yeah, like I get prime example, like the Beatles, like Get Back. You know, it's like super creative, like rhythmically with the melody. The lyrics make no goddamn sense, and somehow it works. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's like, okay, uh, how did they're like they're like no no, no like uh, yeah this is gonna work yeah their yeah. brains just uh, something about the way they, oh no it was come together I was thinking of get back it's a little more like upbeat but come together where they're like he got toe jam football yeah toe jam football <laughs> holy roller it's like dude yeah I don't know yeah. 
those mean something. Well, nice little combination of well, drugs if, they had going. Well, if you're if you speak that weird Cockney fucking English, like you, they get that slang where like you essentially say anything. You can say how it was explained to me is you basically just say any word that rhymes with the word that you're talking about, and you can insert that into the sentence. Right. And I'm not even gonna begin to try to use. Yeah, example. Example, yeah. <laughs> not happening because I'm, yeah. you know, my improv skills right now are not, not fucking too good. I butcher it. But uh, that's how it works, basically. And so, like, they'll know what you're talking about just based on, like, the words it sounds like you're saying. It's yeah. like, I don't fucking know. It's like weird shit. So maybe that has something to do with it. Uh, with the toe jam football, because I've tried to like listen to that and, and like interpret it in, with that uh, understanding, and it's like, nah, I still don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I have no clue. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. sure there's Holy analysis is, analyses oh, yeah. on the song. Let's ask Paul. Let's uh, let's, uh Andy. Let's DM. Paul yeah, McCartney. the reach out, reach out to Paul McCartney's people yeah. and um, see if see if we'll get back to us and uh, yeah. we get a breakdown of of what um, come together. I mean, was, the lyrics and come together mean. I'm. Well, it was written. Do you know what that song is about? I think that was what our whole I don't, I don't last believe five I do. Disc- I think that's what we were literally just talking have about. You been, have you been sitting there with the answer the whole time? <laughs> yeah, dude. You've been fucking holding out on us, dude? Like, I guess one of them was a kid who lived in the city, and the Hells Angels just rode through town one day like, and went to their friend's bar and just created a ruckus. And he tried to be like, okay, you guys are okay. Yeah. And then he said, now you can't leave. And then a bunch of gangsters beat them up. That was oh. Andy was just... <laughs> he's fucking retarded. He uh, just, do you know what he just did there? That's a scene from a Bronx tale. <laughs> is, that, yeah. is that what happened? Yeah. Was he Because at first, though, no, dude, I seriously, I was like, oh... The Kells Angels came in. They fucking ruined a bar in in some weird Liverpool town. And the fucking Beatles were like, why can't we just all come together? And that's why they wrote the song. But no, he literally just he said the scene from a Bronx tale. Do you remember a Bronx tale? Uh Uh-uh. All right. Have you seen it? Uh Uh-uh. Okay. So there's a scene where this biker gang rolls in to the their little area the Bronx. Is it the exact scene that he just described? Literally, that you're yeah. Describe? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But more specifically Chaz Palmentary, it's like he he's the head shit, he's the man. And uh it's his bar. And uh he's the mobster's dude in the Bronx blah blah blah. So they come in and they think they're the hot shit and causing trouble. And they're smacking around the bartender. It's like, hey, guys, take it easy, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And um, they're like, you know, can you leave? Do you mind? Can you, come on, guys. Let's just, you know, let's leave. And they're like, nah, fuck you. And then he locks the door and says, now you just can't leave. And the Beatles come together was the whole backdrop for the whole scene. Oh, that, the, was, gotcha. that was playing the whole See, time. I don't, That's what uh, makes me think of it. Okay. All right. See, now it's funnier. Now that I know that, I forgot yeah. that the Beatles come together was playing during that. But, gotcha. but then the mobsters completely beat the shit out of the bikers, trash their bikes, and right. Uh, the young kid who's narrating the whole movie witnesses this whole thing, so it's like it's a famous story that he tells. But it's a very, very famous scene in the movie because the, that line "Now you can't leave" is anybody who knows movies knows that line. You're not a movie. Are, are, are you? Are you a? Are you a movie guy? A movie buff? I like them. I, I don't know that I would qualify myself as a movie. You don't buff. qualify yourself as a movie. I consider. I qualify myself as a movie buff. I get a lot of. I can. I can get a lot of references. Oh, that's weird. No, I have a shitty memory like that, where I won't necessarily get references, but. I can almost I can name almost any movie that's on TV inside of ten seconds, even if I have seen it or not. Just because I've seen enough movies, previews attached to those movies, it's like you know enough actors, actresses, and what they've been in. You know, your brain just does that quick little algorithm in your head. And I don't know. I have a weird knack for that. Nice. I could just it's like uh the uh, uh, name that tune. Remember name that tune? Yeah. 
back in the day for all you young folks out there. I can a do that. Show from the set was it seventies or early eighties maybe. I don't know. I saw reruns. <laughs> was it just a piano? Would they just play it on the piano? I don't every time. Remember. If you don't know what it is, Google it. I'm, you'll figure it out. It's called you, Name That Tune. You could probably guess what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By by the name of yeah. the show. But yeah. yeah, they would just play like... Uh, there were like levels though, weren't it? Like depending on like what level you unlock. I don't remember the format, but you could like unlock different levels and it right. would play a longer or shorter snippet of the song. Yeah, it's like three seconds. Yeah. If you got lucky, you would get like a, a longer version. Do-do. Yeah. Yeah. Be like, yeah. Yeah. You're <laughs> like... like Ah, uh, come on. Are you fucking... Yeah, I remember yeah. that one time. I was like, are they serious? Like, that's a note. How, that that note is that... It, dude, it's E fucking flat. That's literally in fucking yeah. 90% of songs. I just made that up, too. Wikipedia named that tune. Uh, usually images or uh, or YouTube works better for these type of situations. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. He's trying to get info on it. He's doing it listen. for the year. It premiered in 52, but they have revised oh. versions in the 70s, 80s, and I think it, I thought that they have a new one in 2021 also. Or it's scheduled to premiere in 2021. It's, and that tune will live on Yeah, forever. it looks like that. See, instead of instead of uh, look, being like, oh, I wonder why Andy pulled that up. I was just like, hey, so why'd you pull that up, dumbass? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know we were talking about name that tune, but... But, but he's a like, contributing member he's of this really, podcast. Dude, he's he's uh, try my best over here. He's producing the shit out of this podcast. Uh when we were uh when Jamie was here, like we were talking about stuff and he like would just start Googling it or whatever. So like, yeah, it is uh producing the shit out of this. I, I apologize. That was way it's like my second time using a way out of line. He finally admitted he goes, it's like my second time. Using a computer. Your phone doesn't count. He's like, when I type it in my fingers, it's one thing. But using this whole mouse contraption is like, oh my goodness, I don't know. Wow, what's uh, how are we doing on time? Curious. Not that I'm in a rush or anything, but... uh, You asked me to enlarge that screen on the green button earlier. I've been scared to hit a button again to get it back to that OBS thing. So if you bring your cursor... (laughs) I love this is awesome because the audience gets executive to, coaching gets, here. The audience gets to watch us teach a 40 year old how to use a computer during this podcast as well. It's funny. It's we'll fun. see his whole progression, it's man. It's He's going to be the freaking no, that's, Bill Gates. That's, that's the shit, dude. Yeah. Everyone's everyone's seeing uh, this from the beginning. But like episode 50, when Andy's like basically the next best uh, Jamie Vernon. Dude, it's gonna be fucking. It's gonna yeah. be great. Dude. He's got a degree in sound s- engineering. Sitting here for a while, like trying to click on an icon, but like, what if I press it and it just kills? And he's a, thing, he's afraid. So. Dad, well, I appreciate I appreciate that you've been um, <laughs> at mind. least at least thinking about that. So all you gotta do is take the cursor and go all the way up to the top of the screen and leave it there for a second, and it no nope, all the way up as like touching the top of the screen. Now see how it drops down. Now you can minimize that screen. Ah, uh, nope. That'll close that out. Green one again? No, green one again. And when the green one shows up, that yellow one will completely minimize it. And, and there you go. We are. Yeah, we're back. Uh, I'm eventually gonna need glasses, but that's about an hour fourteen. All right, that's cool. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're doing it. We're talking what, about things. What's the goal? Hour and a half? Yeah, I try to stay like right at about hour twenty to hour and a half ish. I feel like that's a like like. That's the money zone for newer podcasts. Yeah. Joe Rogan's in a place where you can go five I, hours. And I like no that. I, I mean, I still do. I like but, the long form. But like, I, I don't really listen to a four hour Joe Rogan podcast anymore. What I you I I can because for a while work was at least a half an hour away. Right, minimum. So anywhere between a half an hour, forty-five minute drive. So drive there, drive home's an hour and a half. Lunch breaks forty-five. So you can get almost some like two thirds of a Joe Rogan podcast in one work day. Some guys, my buddy, um, listens to podcasts. He does lawn service and shit, so he listens all day. While he, you know, some guys doing landscape and probably just mowing lawns. 
listen to podcasts all day. So they'll bang, he'll bang out like two in a day sometimes. Jesus. Which is crazy. So he's like waiting for the next one. That's too much for me. I like music when I'm working. Yeah. Working construction, I can't listen to talk radio. I used to like Howard Stern was cool. I used to like Howard. I like Howard in the morning on the drive to work. So Joe Rogan's essentially become my Howard Stern right. replacement. And uh, so anytime I'm driving, for instance, uh, the open mics right. at the studio, that's an hour and 20 minute drive for me. So on the ride there, I do a podcast on the ride home because it's late night. I do music so I don't fall asleep and shit because podcasts all the fucking Yeah. Be like falling asleep at the wheel and shit. So, um, but depending on the guest, I've said this before, is depending on the guest, uh, sometimes they'll cut it short. I'll be like, damn, I won't like kind of keep going. I'm like, what the fuck? Like if right. like Dave Chappelle or a Bill Burr. Like Bill Burr you know, just did an hour and twenty with him. I was like, what the fuck? Really? Yeah. Shit. Like we were you were just getting warmed up, like cracking me up, and then you're gonna leave? You bastard. Don't tease me like that. So have you I've listened had, to I've Bill had, Burr's? Like I've got a buddy that's really into the Money Monday morning podcast, but I've never really given it a shot. I listen to it, it's fun. Yeah. He just rants about shit. And it's I mean cool. he's done them live where he just sits in a chair and yep. has a piece of paper and is like, eh, about this. I didn't realize how long he had been doing it for because I just yeah. got into podcasts within the last like four or five years. But he's been doing his forever, I guess. Um I was listening to it for a little bit before I started developing a bigger library of podcasts that I follow. Because I like to watch them for some reason. Uh, it's just more because I, I, I like, like that. Theo uh, Vaughn's. Do you? Yeah. I like it when he has guests on. Yeah. Because um, that's, I guess that's, that was the point I was getting to. I like, because that's like real, that's true reality TV to me. Like reality TV is not reality TV. It's all produced bullshit and whatever. But like when you watch just two people that you enjoy shoot the shit about stuff. Like, I like Theo Vaughn's sense of humor. I like, uh, you know, na you name whoever a guest of his that I enjoy watching. Sense of humor. You watch how those two riff off each other. It's, like, interesting. And right. it, it's entertaining. It's, like, it's organic, too. It's, you know? So, that's why I like watching them. Because, like, listening, it just turn. I don't know. It just turn I hate talk radio. I, we used to listen to sports talk radio for the longest time. It was just like it gets to be the same old shit. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. I guess it's that it's more personable. It's you get to see how they interact and react to each other as opposed to just hearing it. That's just kind of how I've de that's how I developed my pod. That's how I consume podcasts, I guess. So the ones that are visual are the ones I tend to gravitate towards. And I don't like Zoom that much. So even popular podcasts that I was a fan of that more recently because of, you know, our our times and our situation have gone to Zoom. Like uh, Bill, Bill Burr and Burt Kreischer were doing a one. And they yeah. probably get like, had like three or four. They had lapel mics too. I want to yeah. get lapel mics because I like it. It's even up this shit in your face and it's like you're just hanging out. Smoking a cigar, drinking, shooting the shit. Because that's, that's the idea what this is supposed to be, just to hang anyway. And that's what I liked about it. It's just like you're watching these two dudes that you think are interesting hang out and just fucking spitball about random bullshit. And then they went to Zoom, and I was like, oh, this is fucking stupid, dude. This looks like every other fucking thing that I've been seeing recently. It's not. It's a different thing, so. Right. I don't know. As a... Uh, I'm opinionated, but whatever. As a consumer of entertainment, I fucking like what I like, and I don't like what I don't like. So I'm not like shitting on anyone for doing Zoom. It's just it's, it's the way I consume podcasts, and I prefer to see the live interactions. Right, and that's why I, that's why I'm doing. I, I prefer to do this this way. Also, you know, I'm gonna broadcast it on YouTube because you know that's how I like to consume it. So that's how I'm gonna. Put my entertainment out. Was I answering a question? I don't even know, dude. I start to rant. You you asked you, you lost me. You I don't get, have no idea, dude. You get me on a topic. Was it? 
you get me on any topic that I'm um, passionate or interested about and fucking just get out of the way, dude. I'm, I'm going to go. Yeah. Um, no, I know there was a question back there somewhere. We were talking about. Oh, yep. Hour and a half, hour and 20. You asked me about the, the time. Yeah, like, I think I asked you more recently was I about started, the Monday morning podcast. Oh, yeah. yep. That's what it was. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I did. Mm-hmm. And the reason I enjoyed it is because you don't get to hear Bill Burr talk about local stuff. Like Boston stuff. Mm-hmm. So he's been living in L.A. for however long he's been living in L.A., But he is still a Patriots fan, a Celtics fan, a Red Sox fan. And on the, you know, Monday morning, Thursday afternoon podcast, you get to hear him talk about his passion for his sports teams. And so you're like, oh, you, it, it almost reminded me like, oh shit, this motherfucker is from Boston and he still like loves Boston. He still like, remember, you know, I think he was going to talk about moving back here um, on Joe's podcast. Um, I don't know about that. Or just, I mean, yeah. dude, he probably has a place. So he's like, that probably means like living here for six months out of the year. Yeah. Like move back here for, for a celebrity of that caliber means like, I'm going to live there for four months out of the year instead of fucking one. It's just interesting. Cause like Boston's such a huge city, but the comedy scene's pretty good here, but it's not like insane good compared to New York. Right. Where but it's it- also, Wants to be as big as New York, as far as as many places, like how many places are doing it. Right. There's just not enough clubs. There's not enough clubs. No, they're all just like bar. Yeah, yeah a ton exactly. of bar shows. There's not enough two two clubs like, for like, like clubs dedicated to comedy. Right. Because yeah, definitely in New York, it's like this is what we do here. Like right. that you're coming here specifically for this, and so I think it creates. It I mean, even in Colorado, more. there's like there's three comedy clubs, and like that might be commensurate with Boston, but Colorado's proportionately, like, yeah, Colorado's like a fifth of the size. Yeah, exactly. So you're right. Doesn't make any sense. There's a great. Uh, there used to be a shit ton. That's why all those guys are from here. Is there was a lot. Have you seen? Well, that's the that's actually gets to the point i was, the, was gonna say uh have you seen the mike berbiglia quote on the wall at the comedy studio uh-uh. so he filmed or didn't film but it recorded a special at the studio i think mm-hmm. I, I forget what it was called so like a, an album an album yeah yeah what did i say you recorded a special it. Or, yeah. Yeah. did i say special yes you recorded an album at the studio and I don't know if it was the the photo from the album that he signed, but it was it was a it was a it's a Mike Birbiglia poster at the studio that he signed. But he wrote a quote before he signed it. It says, uh, "Every great comedian starts here, then moves to New York." Yeah, and it really like if you look back to. All the greats, like a lot, or not all the greats, but like a lot of the greats. So a lot of like, dude, I mean, it's like, it's like Alabama for football or whatever. Name like, you name your fucking um, like uh, grooming ground for the NFL, like, you you know, D1 football, the SEC, right? That's Boston for comedy, essentially, is like so many great. You know, you hear Joe Joe and talk with other, you know, Northeast, like whether it's New York, uh, Boston, Philly. He just talks about there's something. That he's, he's the cold. He's like, it's fucking cold here. And people yeah. deal with that. And they be, they get rigid. They talk shit. They don't give a fuck. I don't know. It's, it's something. But it, I think that's lost. I think that's gotten lost over the years with the whole. I don't know, man. I, I get the sense, and I haven't done a ton of comedy outside Boston. You know, I did some in Europe. I did some in Oklahoma when, when I traveled there. It's just harder to get a laugh here. So I think that makes you better. It's because yeah. people are, in general, more disgruntled. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I wonder how, because I don't know how. It's my just not jokes. a really friendly environment. 
and then I think that's better for making you better. Yeah, because you're gonna be hard. Well, you're either gonna fucking crumple and yeah, and and not like make it, or you're gonna be like, all right, whatever. I'll learn how to deal with this shit. Right. It's so fun to observe. I love. I'm such a people watcher. The comedy open mics are some the some of the funnest places. Malls and open mics. <sighs> if you're a people watcher. Go to malls and open mics. You will have the best time of your life. Because there's nothing better than being in a room full of like 80% antisocial people. Just having to be in a, a social situation because they don't have any choice because it's the only way they're going to get to do their time. Right. It's the best. It's like you're just watching them navigate just social people like trying to be social with them and then being just be like how the fuck can i extract myself from this situation as quickly as possible so i can go sit by myself or or just whatever like i don't know how to react to your kindness it's it's great even fr- like i know people you know friends of mine that uh i won't call their names out but like and, and I'll, I'll throw in different names too so it doesn't seem so specific of rest but like Hey man, what's up? How's it going? It's like, hey, have you seen Bob? It's like, all right, cool. Like, uh, we could just have a quick little conversation, or like, you could just go find your crutch real quick. You know, it's yeah. like the, the one you're you're the one well, person the that you too. hang out. Where it's yeah. like, hey dude, like it's really clicky. Yeah, where it's like, dude, I, like I was, we could have just had a cool conversation. Like we've we've been around each other enough that you could have, but it's like it was like you immediately were like sensed uh, um i don't know what it maybe i'm also like i by the way i fucking over think and overanalyze everything so i could just be crazy too but i was just like it was weird i was just like hey oh hey what's up have you seen but that's almost like his reaction every time you know right that's the first thing you almost say almost every time i see you is like all right well go go find your dude and then come back and well the three of us will talk what's right like, yeah it's just i don't know it's, I'm not talking shit. I just. It's, I mean, it's different. I mean, I haven't. When you go to Rhode Island too for these mics, it's like, it's mostly Rhode Island folks, and they kind of stick together. And yep. then, yeah. Yeah. I don't bit of give an a outsider. shit, dude. I'm, no, I'm never gonna. I will infiltrate. I will. Make oh, it doesn't you, bother me. Yeah, <laughs> but I like almost force myself into people's lives. Because <laughs> I'm like, dude, if I'm gonna be around you this much, you're not gonna just have. You're not going to get to fucking sit 10 feet away from me once a week and have this fucking preconceived notion of who you think. You know what I mean? This idea of who I am because it's very easy to judge me because I'm sorry and I'm very sarcastic. And especially now that, you know, when you do comedy, it almost breaks down your walls a little bit. And sometimes you got to remember that you're not around comedians. Like I've been in situations where I've been in certain settings where I'm like, I'll say a thing where I'm like, Oh yeah, this is not the comedy studio. Like you can't just like throw off the cuff remarks like that. Right. It's shocking to people, but like around comedians, like it's cool. You can be loose, say crazy shit. But if people don't know you, someone like, like I'm just sarcastic and, but right. I'm look, I, it's going to sound ridiculous. I'm a fucking sweetheart. Anybody that's friends with it, people love me, dude. I'm not like I, I'm. I'm an asshole. I know I'm an asshole. Like, but I think that comes from working construction, and you get this very sarc. Like you put up, you got this shell, and you learn sarcasm, and you learn how to rib people real good. And people who aren't really like into ribbing other people are be like, dude, that was fucked up. You know, you're just, oh shit, like sorry, I forgot. I got to put the kid gloves on with you. I can talk shit to him. I can, whatever. But so. I, the point is, I won't allow you to like just judge me. If we're gonna, if we're gonna fucking, if I'm around you on a weekly basis, I will inject myself into your fucking life, and you can choose to reject me or accept me. And but I'll recognize that real quick, and I'll either fuck off, or then we'll now have a good enough rapport that when we pass each other, it's like cordial, you know, as opposed to this weird little like, you know, that nod or that like. I know who you are. You know who I am. We're in the same places, but like, you know, it's just like, it's so fucking weird and awkward to me that I like, but I'm some like, people if just you're not going to do talkers, it, you know? Yeah. yeah. 
but I try to like we you know I feel them out or weed them out. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I like to be sociable with people. I'm from out in a social setting, and it's weird to me. The, like this, those people that it's just the open mic thing. It's just such a weird dynamic, right? Because it's such a social environment, but it's the most antisocial fucking people in the world, dude. And like, it's just fun. It's almost like a game to me to just navigate those waters. Cause I am the, in the back of my head. I mean, he, dude, he's another person who's like that. This dude will say shit cause it makes him laugh. He doesn't give a fuck if it right. offends you or whatever. He'll just giggle in his head and move on. He doesn't care if you, you hate him or whatever. It's like he get, he wins regardless. You know, I'm not, it's not like deviant, but it's like, I'm just going to be sociable. If you don't want to be sociable with me, I'll move on. I'll, I'll put you in, I'll, I'll put that check mark on you. You're blacklisted. Cool. I know how to react with you, but I'll at least put the feeler out there, I guess is what I'm saying, you know? Right. Cause I hate that. It's like, it's almost like tension. There's like that weird tension where you're like. You know someone, you've seen them enough on stage where you kind of know what their personality is like. They've seen you enough on stage where they know what your personality is like. You have an idea whether you like them or not, but like you're not willing to just find, you know what I mean? It's like, they're just like, I don't know. It's like you, you avoid all these people that you essentially, you, you're avoiding people you're hanging out with. Right. So just hang out with the people you're hanging out with, dude. There's like a, uh, there is some type of, community here like we're all doing the same goddamn thing let's be slightly supportive of each other and whatever you know so yeah i'm i'm a little aggressive and it can be and so it's either like real quickly people are like oh or they're like oh this guy fucking whatever so i'm a i'm a love me or hate me type there's pretty much no in the middle i remember when i got here man i was friendly and i'm just like pretty normally friendly i suppose and people were it didn't like yeah it didn't reciprocate by yeah. any means it's just it's just a little boston thing but like it yeah, is I, a... I, I remember i could tell you probably everyone who was at the first open mic i was at you know yeah there was like three and, there's and, like five people and it, it was just like they just like didn't it just took them such a long time to warm up which is all right but it's like okay you almost have to like they have to hear one or two funny jokes and be like, oh, this guy's actually kind of. It's like you, yeah. you, they have to validate you somehow. It is a just, pissing contest. It or? is. It's so fucking bullshit, and especially the ones that are are like somewhat a little bit established. Like you have to get to some level of credibility before they'll recognize you. Like it's like right. they almost recognize their level and above. Right. Or almost at their level, but if you're not, it's it's like, dude, we, you. Listen, motherfucker. There's a good video game analogy they used to think of. Cause it's like you play like a ranked match, and these motherfuckers are are gangster. Right. Like you think you're good, and you're like, oh, I'll go play ranked, and it's a whole nother level. And they're like, hey, a fucking idiot. Well, you didn't know you're supposed to fucking do that. How are you not? And, and you're like, dipshit. Like, didn't you ever? Didn't you play your first ranked match ever once right. in your life? Like you were at the same place I was at some point in your life and had to get to the status you're at so that you had to be some level of acceptance or you had to, you know, it's that frat shit too. Or like when you're a, a, a pledge, right? You're like, Hey, fuckhead. Like, remember when you went through this? I don't know. It's, it, it's like you, there are plenty of people who aren't that way. You know, and those are the fucking good. Those are the those are the the real ones. You know, those are the ones that I like to hang out with. It's like they understand that they were at the same place you were at some point in their life. So why what's why look down on someone like like why not just like understand like oh yeah I remember that like it hey, hard, man. it is hard to contextualize that like at the open mic level I found too you just like. You see, like uh, someone who's doing it for like the first couple times, and you're like, "God, this is painful." Man, maybe it is because it reminds you of yourself, too. Is you you're just like, well, "I do not want that's to a good, watch this." <laughs> like, that's a good point because yeah. that is such a uh, inherently like human thing to do is just project your own insecurities right. onto everybody else. So that's probably 
a great point because it's like you're just like, oh God, what the fuck are you thinking? We're just like, yeah. Was really what you're thinking is like, what the fuck was I thinking? Yeah, that's a good point. Very good point. Yeah. Well said, Andy. What time is it? I feel like that's like a that's like a good thought to end on. Indeed, we we must be like a, an hour twenty in, right? We're right there. Hour thirty. Hour thirty. Uh, hour thirty five. Oh, yeah. L- that's literally perfect timing. Well, you know how we end this. I gotta write something. You don't have to write it. See if we if we move the mics far enough away and the way the sounds we've actually we've actually engineered the sound well enough gotcha. to where it works. So if you just whisper it, I've had to explain this to my guests before, and they're like, "Oh, they get all." It's like it's like not that hard, dude. Just just say a thing or a a word, and and blah blah blah. I don't care what it sounds like, but you need a moment. Yes. All right, you gotta, he's gonna think of a good one. That's it. Have you, the last one I believe had something to do with uh, turtle sex. So, he is very. It's going to be creative, whatever the fuck it is. I know that. Uh, for those of you who are watching for the first time, uh, my guess how we end every episode is my guess uh, says uh, t- one phrase or word, whispers one phrase or word to me, and um, I have to say it uh, no matter what it is. I have to say it with a smile and a thumbs up to the camera. So it's an opportunity to the guests. To the get, I, yeah. I've had a little whiskey. I can't. I know I'm out. Tra- talking's is escaping me a little bit, but uh, it's an opportunity for the guests to fuck with me a little, or what? You will say. You guys know what I'm gonna say, <laughs> um, and I guess it's probably the truth too. But uh, I'm Thatcher, and nobody has trash like me. What? He's the king of the trash, everybody. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. You, yeah. Quality content. Hey. <laughs> <laughs>